now, I want to do a, a little disclaimer. Um, I, I, I'm a proponent of AI. I mean, I'm a techie. My daughter even has a master's in data science and works in the field. So, but my um, my due diligence compels me to sort of play the devil's advocate in all of this, right? And 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 so my understanding is um, that there's a ge another gentleman uh, who's also known as another godfather of AI, Jeffrey Hinton, who uh, who just quit uh, Google, yeah, uh, so that he can speak freely <coughs> about concerns with this rapidly developing technology. And his work is more on neural networks, uh, and it teaches AI the, how to process data, much similar to how the brain processes data. And, and the concern is that if we take a, a step back at the 50 foot, thousand foot level and, and look at AI, the concern is that um, that AI will become more intelligent than humans, and the time frame for this was was uh, to occur in about 50 years, but they've since updated it and said that within five or 10 years, this is gonna occur. And w things that could happen with, 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 with uh, if, if things like that occur, they've been saying is that it could learn how to, um, how humans manipulate others to sort of uh, uh, sway public opinion and God knows we have good teachers out there that, uh, that sway public opinion right now. And, and, and so that it could, uh, it could sway opinion on wars, on elections, and so on and so forth. And to me, what really comes forward to is when I was a kid, I watched this movie, 2001 Space Odyssey, how the computer, <laughs> and, and, and really, I mean, that was based on AI. And, and so can we get into a situation, my concern is as, as being plain the devil's advocate, can we get into a situation where AI sort of takes control where we have no control? Um, so I'm not quite sure where we should go with this. Um, <laughs> I've known Jeffrey Hinton for 50 years. I profoundly disagree with what he's been saying in the last few days. Okay, first of all, I think it's intellectually dishonest to say that this is based on understanding of neuroscience. It's just intellectually dishonest, that's, that's just false. Okay. Secondly, most of the people in the field look at ChatGBT and think it's a very interesting tool. It will do things like change the college essay. You're going to have to do new things. You can't teach people to write just by asking them to write an essay anymore. You'll have to do more creative things like here's an essay that ChatGPT wrote. What's wrong with it? What's wrong with the reasoning? Make it better. We still have to think. Our thinking ability is so far beyond what ChatGPT can do, and that's going to be true for the rest of our life. Okay? The message I'm trying to give you is that if we open this up, not just to Google, where Jeff Hinton was working, to develop it and sell it and make a lot of money and control everything, if we open this up to everybody, including social sciences, including humanities, including cognitive scientists, including economists, everybody, including everybody throughout the third world, throughout all the world, and make it a human endeavor, we can have control over it, just like other powerful kinds of technology. We had control over electricity. There was fear that electricity was going to ruin humanity. There, it, you, you have no idea. I've looked back. Right? Now, so we, we, we want to be Pollyanna that this just stuff is great. That's probably part of the problem, is that a lot of these AI people, when I said AI people, I don't even think of myself as one. I'm an engineer and a scientist. I want to build these things right and build them so they're safe to people. Like civil engineering, people built buildings and bridges that didn't fall down. That was important to do. This, the same thing has got to be done here. But it has to be done in a sober way, that we're not creating super intelligences. We're not going to, you know, the, 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 the science fiction is not where it's heading. And we have to think, talk, think about sober. So to me, as an academic, it really is critical to come back to the university and say, let's do this right. Let's educate people about it, what it is, what it's not. And not the, the exuberance of single individuals who are quite sure of their own genius and love to go to the New York Times and create uh, mythology. Uh, let's not let it get out of, out of, out of control. Uh, so if I were in front of the Congress, I'd say exactly the same thing. Um, a lot of the, uh, you know, the, the thought leaders in my generation were the Jeff Bezos or the, or the Bill Gates. I had respect for them. I don't have respect for Elon Musk. I don't have respect for Sam Altman. These people are not computer scientists. They don't understand what, they, what's come, what's do, what they're doing, and they're trying to ride a wave and then they get all guilty about the wave. And so it's a hugely confusing situation for a lot of people to be in, including congressmen. 
And, and I think that's damaging and it's sad. So we have to fight back by being, you know, the, you know what humans are, which is clear, transparent, and thoughtful.